brought to you by Bethel School of Technology. Learn more at BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. A new career movement emerges. Well, we're all about the terms, right? We're all about the great resignation and quiet quitting and the great regret and all these things. Uh, but this is this is less about the phrase, and, and uh, this is a very, very interesting dynamic. So this is for those of you that are trying to grow professionally, move up, and this is for those of you that are leading others who want to grow. Very vital information. This is a new information study came from the University of Phoenix Career Institute, released its 2024 Career Optimism Index, a comprehensive study examining the state of American workers' career trajectories and sentiments about the future of their job. More than half, 53% of Americans say they are easily replaceable. Gosh. Now, I wonder if this is a result of Americans believing they aren't valuable because of how they're treated, or if this is some sort of awareness, <laughs> which we all know, if we're honest, that no one's irreplaceable. Um, we have some younger people in the booth. because uh, Joe and I are like the old dogs. Joe, you like how I'm including myself in that now? Like it's not just you. Are, how familiar are the rest of you with the phrase, no one is irreplaceable? Kelly, have you heard that? She's she's young. Christian, no one's irreplaceable. All right. It's kind of a colloquialism. All right. So part of me wonders, is 53% going, look, nobody's irreplaceable. And by the way, I subscribe to that. Uh, are we all unique? Yes. Are, are, are any of us irreplaceable? No. No, we're not. Um, but it makes me wonder, is this an eyes wide open scenario or is this people feeling like I'm, I'm not very valuable. I'm not valued. I suspect it's a combination. Uh, next, uh, what some of the key findings, there's a wide disconnect between employer perception and, uh, worker realities on opportunities for advancement. In other words, we've reported on this, um, employers think they have created an environment where it's easy for someone to move up the ladder, but workers, they don't sense that. And so we've got this great expectation situation. I expect you to be happy. It's from the leader standpoint. I expect you to know you've got an opportunity here. I expect you to bust it because you can grow here. And the workers are going, you don't develop me. There's no active program for developing and training and promoting. Now, I can tell you, I've been blessed to be at Ramsey Solutions where there is a very, very intentional program and ongoing um, touch points with leaders and their teams with the sole purpose of growing and developing people so that they get promoted and move up. And, 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 and I've seen it, but that doesn't exist in most companies. I can just tell you if they were to post that comment on social, I'll guarantee you that the comments would bear that out and go, yeah, Ken, I've, I've not worked at a place where they actively are training and developing for a new position or just all around upskilling more on that in a second. So there's a great divide between what leaders think they're offering versus what the employees say that they're getting. Although workers do see a need in this study to continue acquiring skills. So that's good. They haven't given up. And they value employer investment and skilling. So one of the engagement issues that companies could turn on a dime and begin to see more engagement is people are more engaged when they feel valued. And this is not walking around going, you're really sweet and you're really nice. No, no, no. They go, you're upskilling me. You're, you are paying for me to go to conferences. You are paying for a certification over here. You're paying for a license thing over here. You're actively investing in my growth. And when employees feel that, they appreciate it and their loyalty goes up, which means their engagement goes up. Loyalty is, you know what? You've done good for me. I appreciate you. I want to do good by you. And so then they engage. 
So understand that leaders, you want to increase engagement, increase loyalty, do things that make people loyal to you. And they're going to come in and they're going to work harder and they're going to work longer, not because you told them to, but because they want to. Woo. Leadership 101 right there. The flip side, while people are, they, they value employers investing in their upskilling when they don't get a lack of support as it relates to growing professionally in their career, moving up, then workers begin to feel stagnant. It's a fancy word for, they start to just feel blah. They're kind of like Eeyore for those of you that love the, the beloved purple donkey. He's just never kind of excited or hopeful about anything. And that's what happens. You, you create a company of Eeyores. They're just kind of wandering around. It's not going to get better. And folks, that's because we humans are creatures of progress. But despite all of this, workers are optimistic about their abilities. They believe in themselves. So really interesting. So couple things here. What can leaders do? Well, if I'm looking at this and taking from this study, um, leaders need to close that gap that we were talking about where they think they're offering opportunities for people to upskill and grow in their, in their professional life so that they make more money and they can do things, do more things in their personal life, but the workers don't. So what they got to do is got to go, wait a second. We got to do a better job of offering or talking about what we're willing to offer. It might just be that simple. We got to start offering stuff. Hey, we're going to invest in you. Oh, by the way, we want to talk about it a lot so that you realize that we want to invest in you. So that's part of it. And, and that's how we close that disconnect, that gap there. And then also allow your leaders to create customized team environments. And this is, I'm speaking more to your larger companies, even in small businesses of a hundred uh, and up, I would say this, I'm just kind of rule of thumbing this. If you've got multiple teams, understand that each team is its own team. It's it's like this on a football team. You have three teams within a team on a football team. 53 man NFL roster's got three teams. It's got the offense, it's got the defense and special teams. All three, by the way, have coaches. Now, they're all part of the same team. The head coach is coach of all of them. But make no mistake, and I've been to I've been to several NFL training camps. I've seen how it operates. They operate as individual units of one greater team. And so there's a culture. You ever been around offensive linemen? I have. They're weird. Different dudes. Don't get me started about linebackers. These guys are certifiably nuts. A different people. Wide receivers. They're the prima donnas. Defensive backs, cocky. I mean, I could go, I know this, Nathan, because I've been around NFL athletes. I've been around pro teams. I've walked among them in the hallways. By the way, you should see that. It's really funny. It's literally like I'm a shrimp with legs. I mean, being around these big guys, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, but but here's what I know. And so, and so you take all those unique personalities that I just described and think about them on a unit. And here's one of the things I think leaders ought to do a better job of is allowing the leaders of that team. So the offensive coordinator, create your own kind of unique work experience for the offense because they're practicing together. They're rooming together on the road. They operate together in the game when it matters most. And so, Three other quick things for leaders, because I, I want to translate this to leaders. And those of you who aren't leaders going, I need to know the answers. Am I getting good answers to these three questions? Because leaders, here's what I want you to know. And those of you that aren't leaders, here's what you need to know. Here they are. Three questions. Does my work matter to me? Am I appreciated? Does my boss care about me? L leaders, listen to me. That's what every team member is asking, whether they say it out loud to you or not. They're thinking it and feeling it. They're asking. It's every day. They're kind of gauging. Does my work matter to me? Am I appreciated? Does my boss care about me? And really what's going on here is, is, is there meaning and purpose in the work? Do they get recognized for their contribution? And, and do they have a real relationship with you besides just the boss and the person who keeps them employed? This is really huge because if we can increase these kind of things, the relational, the communicational part of this, then you're going to see greater engagement 
and less stagnation and people pulling together to do great things and change their life as well. Launch your tech career today at BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman.